If we vote with our money for projects we believe in, we can create a future where our society is driven by new ideas. It need only begin with private driveways and parking lots. Once the ball gets rolling, it'll create a momentum all of its own. So the future of transport has finally arrived. Solar freaking roadways are here. Finally, we can see them working. I mean, you remember the claims, right? Solar freaking roadways. What are they? They're solar freaking roadways. Solar freaking roadways. I mean, what a great idea to replace all of the roads in America with smart technology. It's technology that replaces all roadways, parking lots, sidewalks, driveways, tarmacs, bike paths, and outdoor recreation surfaces with solar panels. And not just lifeless, boring solar panels. Smart microprocessing interlocking hexagonal solar units and how the Department of Transport spent hundreds of thousands of dollars supporting them. Solar panels that we can drive on. These solar panels create energy. Solar pavement that powers the Welcome Center. That's MoDOT's plan for the future. Missouri Department of Transportation's Tom Blair is in charge of the project. Road to Tomorrow is our, our effort to seek new innovations that create new revenue streams for Missouri transportation. Two years of research led them to such great discoveries, the solar panels generate more energy if you point them towards the sun. By testing these rooftop solar panels, and we've got one that's angled toward the sun and one that's flat, with the information we gather here, we'll be able to accurately tell them how much energy this parking lot will produce at this particular location. Ah, oh, truly, they've been spending their $2 million of Kickstarter money wisely, rediscovering the absolute basics of solar power like tilt angle. Not to mention the over one and a half million dollars of taxpayers' money that they've had for this. Now, it turns out the first solar roadway isn't actually in Missouri. It's in Sandpoint, Idaho, home of the inventor of solar roadways, one Scott Bruchel, who, of course, has the backing of the state senator. This is exactly the kind of over-the-horizon thinking that has brought Idaho's own solar roadways to national and world prominence. So what does the solar roadways prototype actually look like? I've got some of them hooked up and running so you can see the patterns and what the LEDs do. The first solar roadways test area set up in Jim Jones Square wasn't quite complete, but there was definitely something to look at. I now I know those who want to tear it down will say that it's actually not a roadway that it's never going to have a car drive on it or a vehicle of any sort drive on it, but it's still definitely a footpath. Actually, no, it's not even a footpath. It's just a paved area in the middle of town. But it's going to generate lots of power, and people are going to be able to see that on the web. <laughs> Until, of course, you go to that web page and find it's blank. Uh, more on why that's actually quite funny later. But they light up pretty, of course. I mean, solar roadways can produce over 16 million colors. Ha, huh, just like my 20 bucks multicolored LED lights. Fascinating. Actually, maybe they should rephrase that, that if they worked, they would produce up to 16 million colors, because all of the ones around the edges don't make any colors. That is, about 18 out of 30 of the panels were dead on arrival. They never produced any light. And that was until, of course, it started raining and another four failed. But maybe that's just because it's all filled up with water. Because it looks like they just went and got a tarpaulin or something from Home Depot. This is the very first one, so it's a, it's a learning experience. So we've made multiple trips to Home Depot, you know, things we didn't think of, we had to buy at the last minute. And then laid all of their tiles down on that tarpaulin without any drainage. And I'm not entirely sure what the hell it is that they've sealed their tiles with, but honestly, it looks kind of like duct tape. And yeah, it might be a little bit relevant that the road building skills of the uh, solar roadway team hasn't quite progressed to the level yet of laying 30 or so paving slabs in a level fashion or getting working drainage on it or simple craftsmanship. But there are still folks out there who think that the fact that they can't even pave a patio-sized pedestrian area is completely irrelevant. These are the genius minds who have thought about road building so much that they're going to completely revolutionize road construction.
These wonderful, intelligent people want to begin manufacturing a technology that can power the future of the whole freaking planet. You need to know about this technology. You need to get behind it. You need to share it with everyone you know, because this is actually happening. Whoa. Imagine if the roads we drive on, just like the leaves of a tree, could absorb photons emitted from the sun to generate energy. Sound too good to be true? Well, a small business out of Idaho named Solar Roadways claims to have figured it out and Missouri's Department of Transportation is taking an interest. Oh yeah, after just one week, only about seven and a half out of 30 tiles were still working. That's a 75% failure rate. Hell, they could have just got a couple of dozen boxes of these things. Solar bricks, they're cheap, plus they actually work. Or for an incredible 20 bucks, they could have actually gone and got some solar-powered string LED lights. You know, like these. And at least those would have actually been solar-powered. Cause, and this really has to be seen to be believed, the first solar roadway ever actually produces zero energy. Zero. Nada. Zip. It produces nothing. It's... Because it's a solar-powered roadway that doesn't generate any power. Um, I have concerns about the future. Is this thing even possible? I told you, yes. Solar roadway technology was invented by engineering couple Julie and Scott Broussard in 2006. Two of the sweetest people in the world who met when they were three and four years old. <laughs> if only someone could have seen it coming. I mean, your bullshit radar should have been twitching from the second that they claimed that they had this working solar roadways prototype, but curiously never showed us how much power it generated. Like, really, if you've actually got a working prototype, well, that's great. Just show us how much power it generates per unit area. Or maybe something simple, like having it run a kettle. That is all they've done is they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to get an illuminated disco floor in the middle of their town square. I mean, damn it, they've just gone for the $20 LED lights. At least they would have had some genuine solar power in their city. Plus, they would have actually had more strobing patterns to choose from. But hell, even if these things did generate energy, we know from simple geometry that it would only generate about half of the energy of a simple rooftop installation. But let's just say that a solar panel that tracks the sun has a 100% efficiency for comparison. Now, if you don't track the sun, you just have a fixed solar panel, then you lose about half of that potential. That is, your solar panel is now operating only at 50% relative efficiency. And if you light flat on the ground, as you would in say a road, you're now down to about 30% efficiency. By this simple act, of geometrically laying these panels down flat on the ground, you are throwing away about 60%, two thirds of their potential power generating capability. But with plan execution like that, maybe it's no wonder that their vision for the future looks like this. Solar panels everywhere, except in the most obvious place of all, which is on the roofs. No, 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 we don't need solar panels on the roof. Let's put them under trees, because that totally makes sense. Now, you might think that's trite, but nope. They actually want to build a solar roadways car park. Yeah. You know, where the cars are parked on top of the solar panels during the day, preventing them from generating any power, then at night, of course, they can gobble up power by lighting up. And of course, it's exactly as Bruce or forecast the future to be. Of course you'll be able to see the LEDs during the day. I mean, just look at LED traffic lights or LED billboards. Pah, what are those naysayers? No, they're the ones who scoffed at Galileo, scoffed at Copernicus scoffed at the automobile. We wonder about people who reflexively dismiss our concept without trying to understand it, or go on public forums and attack us. It helps us to remember that there have always been people against change. For some, it's just too scary. 
They want to just keep things the same. Perhaps they are the descendants of those who argued that the earth was flat, that we didn't need cars because horses worked just fine, told the Wright brothers that they were out of their minds, and or insisted that we would never reach the moon. Or perhaps they are the voices of larger entities who now feel threatened by the, by the paradigm shift that is solar roadways. And absolutely, their grand opening of their solar roadway will vanquish any and all doubt about LEDs not being visible during the day. Oh, that's a shame. Plus, that's the visibility of LEDs during the day, as seen from a favorable high viewing angle, not the low viewing angle that you would normally get during driving. I mean, damn, you can barely see these LEDs when the street lights are still on. Huh, if only someone could have seen it coming. Well, let's start with the obvious. There is no way, none at all, that you would be able to see these LEDs under the full hard sunlight. You know, when these solar panels are meant to be generating the electricity. So here I have some very bright LEDs, which I can have in white, blue, green, or red. And now I have them out in the sunlight for red, green, and blue, and white. So as you can see, once you get into the full light of day, it really isn't quite the same thing as doing it at night. And sure, according to this guy, these solar panels are also going to be heated. And also contain a heating element to stay above freezing, negating the need for snow plows. No matter how much snow we get, this will be clear. The LEDs will still be shining, still be producing energy. However, they're not going to be heated depending whether there's ice on the panels or not. They will always be heated when the temperature is below freezing. That is, for the entire winter in Idaho, they will be heating this patch of sidewalk to freezing point, whether it needs it or not. Yeah, it's a fantastic way to contribute to global warming is to actually heat up the pavement when it doesn't need it. Well, you'll be glad to know that the city of Sandpoint only budgeted half a million dollars for this. That's about $16,000 per panel, which as far as I can tell is actually mostly a state grant with a further $40,000 being spent by the people of Sandpoint. And so this was the mayor saying that the installation was mostly done by city workers. I can ask that part. Well, and I can speak to that a little bit then. So this was primarily funded from an state grant, um, so it's mostly state tax dollars. Uh, there was a small amount that came from Sandpoint Urban Renewal, and then of course the uh, city of Sandpoint did provide some labor uh, from our street crew. Either way, they seem pretty sure that this installation budgeted at about half a million dollars is going to earn its money back by powering a fountain and the lights in the restroom will be laid down here so the public can watch how they light up to create lines for roads, parking lots, and more. They'll produce power for nearby restrooms and this fountain. Now, sure, you could have gone with a regular solar installation, and a regular solar installation that would generate about twice the power of this would cost you about $5,000. Or look down another way, the city of Sandpoint could have given away 99 free solar installations that would generate about twice as much power as this one. And that's, of course, assuming that at some point in the future, they actually manage to get this thing to work and to get it to work at reasonable efficiency. Yep, they could have given away 99 systems that would generate twice as much power as this and still had enough money to put a similar system on the roof of their restroom that would generate twice the power of this uh, <laughs> solar roadways. Sad thing is that solar roadways continues to get wall-to-wall favorable coverage in the media. Bruce says he already has orders from other cities around the country and he says that he's hoping one day there'll be solar roadways all over the place. We're looking at how the LED lights work. Even though it's on a sidewalk, we're gonna have a lot of fun playing around with LED lights, seeing how bright they are in the sun and stuff like that. We, we wanna do that. Federal Highway has research dollars they're allowing us to use. Federal Highway Administration has already provided solar roadways with three separate research grants to deploy and develop their technology or their innovation. 
So they've already done that. Imagine if the pavement you drive on would never ice over, didn't have potholes, the lines light up on their own, and the pavement would generate electricity. A small company from Idaho named Solar Roadways is making an impression on MoDOT. And they, Federal Highway, as well as Solar Roadways, are ready to deploy. And we are the DOT that are working with Federal Highway and Solar Roadways with some Federal Highway research dollars to begin that first public deployment of their technology by a state DOT. With hundreds of thousands of dollars of funding from the state. And hey, let me just tell you what their next conclusions are going to be. That glass is fundamentally too soft a material to make road surfaces out of. Is I'm just going to rub one against the other and almost immediately we'll see that this is an absolute no-brainer that this um, would just the gas or composite versus glass you're just going to end up with ground glass in very short order and the hexagonal tiles are actually a really stupid method of paving a road surface Force the tiles to slowly work their way loose sure these processes can take days months or even years but these are some of the reasons why you've never seen a freeway made out of tiles look blacktop has very good properties for making roads from and of course that a car park is just a really dumb place to install a solar roadway i don't know maybe they ought to try something like this for the car park it'll be about one hundredth of the cost it keeps the rain off your car when it's wet plus it keeps your car cool on the hot days and best of all, this would actually be a working solar installation that would actually generate some power. As we actually get the first panels in place, we will launch a crowdfunding campaign. Again, the first state DOT in the country to do something, we're going to launch a crowdfunding campaign. Um, we believe that there's a lot of fans of their products, solar roadways, that want to see it deployed. We have seen facts that there's a lot of people that really want to see Route 66. Has anyone seen this video for Solar Freaking Roadways? Yeah! Yeah! I have seen the future, and it is Solar Freaking Roadways. Yeah! Panels in our streets with sensors that can know if someone's crossing the street ahead of you with lights, so it lights up and says, careful, there's an animal, there's a kid, there's a pedestrian. Parking lots that can change their minds. Heaters in them so you never have to worry about snow plows anymore. Want to save this planet and make it sustainable for your kids and all future generations of life who can look back and say, hey, at least they invented solar freaking roadways. Please follow the link to Indiegogo.com. Meet Scott and Julie Broussard, check out their work, and get informed. This isn't just donating. It's an investment in a real future. Let's do this.